What's happening, Track Shot? Hope you guys are having a great evening. We're hanging out. Obviously, I'm in my shop like always. Super excited about tonight's guest on Track Shot Chat. Uh, we've got Mr. Brian Anglin from OC Events and Promotions. Uh, if you guys that don't know of Brian, he is the first um, show of the Track Shot Live season this year in Corinth, Mississippi, which I'm super excited about. How you doing, Brian? Pretty good, pretty good. Man, we appreciate you joining us on here. I know you're um, you're probably a little bit nervous about doing this, not necessarily because of uh, being on Track Shot Chat or any of that, but because you got a car to get done. Am I right? Yeah, I'm trying to work on a car for Sturgis for this weekend right now. So what class are you running this weekend? I'm going to run uh, Wicked Weld. Wicked Weld. Now, that's a, that's a new class they've started, isn't that right? Uh, yes, yeah, a whole lot like Pro Stock. Um, they just changed stuff up, um, changed it around. I've got a car that's been built for years that I ran a Derby. It's a little pre-run car, and um, just trying to get it up to par of what it is nowadays. It was built about six years ago, so I'm kind of redoing everything. Absolutely. Well, that's a, definitely a challenge if you're taking a car built six years ago by the rules. I mean, back then you think that was like the height of kicker car days. Yeah, just about it. It was some uh, it was some rules. Dustin Morton years ago at a Waverly show, and uh, it just didn't the car didn't work out. I had rearing issues, so we just set the car aside because it's a tilted car. Nowadays, tilted cars ain't getting used very much, so I figured Wicked Well was a good way to use that tilted car up. So, absolutely. Well, you can see you may not be able to tell, but when you see me in these things, that means I'm getting ready for a Derby too. So. Uh, obviously, I'll be at the show vending, and uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting at my welding table right now. That's why I've got my overalls on. You see me in overalls, you can figure I plan on striking an arc somewhere. So, uh, Brian, we, we've got your show coming up March 16th. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that's in Corinth, Mississippi. Uh, OC yeah. Events and Promotions is Brian's, uh, is Brian's promotions for you guys that don't know. Now, that venue, Brian, that's called the Crossroads. Crossroads Arena, yes, sir. Crossroads Arena. What's that? What's that arena seat? It seats thirty-two hundred people. Wow, that's pretty good. Seems like probably going to be a pretty nice facility for a demolition derby. Yes, sir. They've had monster trucks there and road shows and things like that, but this will be the first demolition derby there. That was my next question: if this was going to be your the the first demolition derby held in that arena. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is. I ran the tough competition years ago there with monster trucks, and I just always thought we'd try to put on a derby there, but I worked on the road for years, so I wasn't able to. And then last year, we started doing derby since I uh, don't work on the road anymore and just kind of lined up where we could try to get that venue. Absolutely. Well, I'm sure glad you did, man. You may not know this, but I've been wanting to get the, get the South on Track Shot Live for a long time. Um, I'm here in Western Kentucky. Uh, we've got a few, quite a few derby drivers around me, and I've really been wanting to get the South and, and kind of showcase what we've got going on down here on Track Shot Live out to the world. Um, I'm really interested, Brian. Honestly, I've been around derby for 20-something years, and I'm a nobody in the sport. I just love it with everything I have. Um, but Knowing that and being a guy, what I consider the South, what um, what got you in a demolition derby? Because Mississippi is not known for demolition derby. So I'm really uh, just kind of interested to hear what got you in it. You do live in Mississippi. Um, I don't know that other than uh, the old shows back in Tunica, Mississippi, that I've ever even heard of a derby in, in Mississippi. Yes, sir. Uh, I dragged around years and – uh, off and on, and I was in apprenticeship school with the Bullermakers, and a buddy of mine, Derby, he lived across the line at Tennessee. Uh, we had apprenticeship school, and he said, hey, man, you want to run a dirt go to Derby tonight? I was like, man, damn, wishing there is. That's a waste of time. And he's like, man, just go with me. About halfway through the Derby, I decided I was going to build a car, and we built a car in five days and went and run Derby a few weeks later. And uh, – at uh, Bolivar, Tennessee, and then we run another one at uh, Savannah, Tennessee, and I ended up winning it. And uh, we uh, we had a good time, and I just I'm just very competitive, and I just been in it ever since. And that was back in uh, I believe 2011. Now, do you mainly build there by yourself, or do you have a couple buddies that build with you? Well, my buddy, we used to build together, and um, 
he wound up having a few kids and we live an hour apart and I got married, so I just built myself and he hadn't been able to derby much lately and uh so I just built on myself and I teach school and uh, a lot of times my school kids can uh help me a little bit right before derby we'll uh we'll pull it in and let them mess with it a little bit but uh but yeah it's usually just me so it, it takes a lot longer than it does somebody else I guess Sure, I understand. And, and you know, like I said, you're in northern Mississippi, so you were kind of brought in under the wing of Tennessee. Um, Demolition Derby is not huge in Tennessee, but it, there is, in fact, Derby there, um, especially the more – it seems like the more west and north you go in the state. Um, quite a bit of Derby, but hopefully now let's get it in Mississippi and Georgia and Alabama and all those places will start reaching out. <laughs> Everybody seems to think that's where all the cars are. Yeah, we got some good cars. I got a few honey holes down here. I ain't gonna lie, but uh, but yeah, we try to. We got we got some cars. You shouldn't have said that. Now you just you just confirmed their suspicion. <clears throat> so Brian, your show, uh, Brian's again. I said it's OC Events and Promotions. The show is at the Crossroads Arena. It's called Crash and Bash. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Crash and Bash Demolition Derby, March 16th, Corinth, Mississippi. Um, now, you guys at home that don't know, Corinth is northern, would you say central Mississippi? Oh, uh, it's north, it's north, northeast Mississippi. There's only one county to the right of it, uh, more east, and that's the county I live in, which is Tishomingo County. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty northeast as it gets, and uh, Corinth is about five, I think five or eight miles as well it's just right there sure yeah so a lot of you guys coming to that show if you're coming from more of the west area or north you're going to come down through memphis most likely or or maybe even nashville and cut over something like that but uh brian what what classes are you running are you're running is am i wrong is there three classes yes sir we're running um Running at Bone Stock, that's our biggest class. Um, we got, I think, 92 cars signed up for that class right now. And then we got Chain and Bang class, and it's full. We've got 30 cars signed up for it. It's a one shot deal. Then we've got minivans, and I think we got right around eight or nine minivans right now. Um, so we're, uh, we'll pick up a few more, I imagine, right when the starts. But, uh, but then we're going to do a little ATV competition. I'll announce more stuff about that when we get closer to the event to figure out exactly what we're going to do. Um, and then we're going to have power wheels for the kids that day as well. That's great. I love the power wheels. And it's, it's really interesting to me that you said minivans because minivans and demolition derby are becoming a thing. But minivans in the south in demolition derby, that's – you know, that's the new concept down here to a lot of these new guys. Yeah, I ran Sturgis back in uh, 2018. I ran a mini truck, minivan class. And uh, just luckily, I was able to run with the minivan guys because I didn't have none of them knock next week because them things hurt. So uh, we uh, ever since then, I always thought minivans was pretty cool. And uh, a guy that I know through Derby and he uh, – he was talking about the minivan things, and I think he's going to do one with his show um, coming up this year as well. And so he kind of gave me the idea, and uh, I've been thinking about it some too. So we're just kind of trying to make it affordable for everybody because not everybody's got that, you know, big derby money. Um, I, I come from uh, the, the stock build kind of stuff, very, very stock, where we call this class uh, bone stock uh, at my show. It's not necessarily bone stock like it was, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, there's lots been a new, lots of new parts and things like that come out that, you know, and some of that stuff I think is, I don't want to say is bad for the sport. I think it's helped progress the sport, but but some of those parts and things like that, I know you want to, you know, you want to say there's a stock build, but there, I believe there are certain parts that help the derby. Um, and and they, they get a lot of, uh, you know, leave a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth, like tie rods and things like that. I think that helps the sport where one, you know, one wheel shot, you've got a bent tie rod or whatever. Um, if you can brace that up a little bit and not brace up the frame, not keep the car from belly in or, or you know, those things, it really does help. Makes yeah, for a better show. That, yeah, that's more of our uh, 
chain and bang that we have is pretty it's pretty much like that it's, it's pretty basic but uh it's more or less the rules like we had when i started and they was called you know bone stock then and it really like i said it's evolved a lot if we compare to what we have the rules now for bone stock back then it would be more like a limited weld almost you know sure now those uh chain and bang rules is that are you close to um kevin richards jake richards Adrian Wright, jesse ushery all those guys the rules that they're running with their promotion there out of like union city tennessee area dyersburg um uh, my rules are actually pretty pretty different um, they're gonna run the more or less the wicked rules uh, i think they're gonna change up a couple things i tried that last year and it just uh, it worked, but I just want to change some stuff. My rules is more of a mix of uh, the blue collar boy rules, and it's got a little bit of wicked stuff to it. But it's more just kind of all to itself. It's more or less so that you can take stuff off of one of my builds and still run somebody else's class. You're kind of overbuilding, but yet you're not gonna. You'll have some more life to your car. Sure, I understand that, and uh, I'm actually really deep in with that. I've been talking a lot with Tyler Goodman, and uh, he and I are going to be actually kind of partnering up in a way uh, to do my hometown show here uh, coming up pretty soon. And I, we were talking about that, and I said, you know, in this area, and especially your area as well, we're kind of under the blanket of wicked. Um, everybody builds to those rules. So <laughs> you've got to kind of be able to get, get – close and, and stay competitive with those rules in order to draw the cars at county fair levels and things yes and speaking of wicked rules uh years ago i i used to talk to brennan dixon a little bit not not a ton but it was more about you know those uh oval window lincolns and stuff because i used to run those a little bit and so did he and so we stayed in contact and when i started doing derbies i asked him a few things and, and i asked him about using wicked rules and they were cool with it you know and we we used them last year and we made a few uh additions to them and everything but uh we just wanted to try something different this year and try to keep the kind of keep the o3s out of the bone stock stuff because a lot a lot of the guys i'm not gonna say scared of them but they just don't want to they don't really want to run with them um unless we're gonna let our old, old iron or something like that run with them as well so that's why we done the the 80s to o2 to try to try something different and as far as the car count it seems like it's uh gonna turn out to be pretty decent sure uh yeah definitely i mean if, if an o3 is done right and these guys are learning them more and more every day so um they are a hard car there's no doubt about it and you know aside from taking wheel shots and things like that if, if they turn it up and they're going north to south or i should say east to west on the track you've got problems unless you get one of them turned around <clears throat> So, Brian, another thing I want to touch on um, while I had you on here was uh, this is the first show for TSL. Um, so I'm super excited about that, especially you were saying that your um, your rules were kind of like Wicked, and which is a general consensus of the South and the rules that are being run and the type of builds that are being done down here. Um, when I say, you know, Kentucky, Tennessee, uh, we've got the promotion out in South Carolina there, uh, Carolina Derby Promotions. They do a fantastic job. Um, I've been to two of their shows now and enjoyed both of them tremendously. And now we've got you over in Mississippi. So, uh, and we've got uh, Jeff over in uh, Jeff Palmer over in Hot Springs, uh, doing the Hot Springs Havoc or Razorback Rumble, whichever, however you want to call it. So that's really exciting stuff. And you're all kind of sticking to the same type of rules. And so it's going to work out really well for Track Shot Live to be there. Yes, sir. Our, um, our, our rules in this area really are a mix of the wicked and the blue collar boys and the, the havoc, you know, because a lot of a lot of guys in the havoc area come into this show and um, they're able to change a couple things and actually they're still reuse some pre run cars. Um, and then some stuff is like, you know, they're kind of overbuilt, so they're going to build a fresh car. But for where our payout is, I mean, a fresh car might be a good thing because it's going to be, I feel like it's going to be a pretty rough deal for sure with uh you know 25 car each and uh we're gonna take 25 cars plus the raffle car and the feature and that's all we're gonna take so we'll uh it'll be it'll be a, it'll be a pretty wild show i feel like absolutely now that venue there you said the track was a pretty good sized track didn't you yes sir the uh inside of 
base is 300 by 150 and we're going to cut it down to 200 by 100 and then for the heats we're going to cut it in half and just do 100 by 100 heats so we can have two heats sitting on the sitting on the floor at a time we can run one as soon as so we can jump over to the next area and run the next one to make everything go quick as possible with as many cars that are uh, signed up to go that way we're not there all day and all night you know Absolutely, man. That's exciting. I didn't know you were going to do that. I like those shows um, where it's just boom, boom, boom. Uh, it's a little, it's a little more complicated when you're on track shot versus uh, when you're doing it just sitting in the stands watching as a fan because you know that mouth's got to keep running one show to the next nonstop, and you're just derby, derby, derby. But uh, I definitely yeah. love those those uh, vids like that. That's you know, similar to like Wicked, we were talking about Wicked Derbies there with the Wicked Team Show where they cut the track in half and run the two heats, uh, the team heats. That's my favorite night of any team show is the heat night. Yeah, I didn't even know that they even done that. And then I was telling somebody, I said, I think I'm going to do this. They said, well, Wicked already does that. I said, well, I just was trying to think about mm -hmm. something to speak. Like, well, they already do that. I said, well, uh, at least I'm not the only one that thinks about it, trying to do it this way, you know. Absolutely. And I, I love the smaller tracks. Um, I like to see the smaller tracks. I like to see the guys drive and sling mud and things like that. Kind of like the old school, you know, doing derbies back in the day. The tracks weren't as big as they are now. And you kind of had a close quarters, had to really drive the drive the car. Yeah, our last two shows that me and my wife we put on this last year uh, was at a, uh, a fairground and we had 80 by 120 area and that was it. It was pretty tight. Sure. Yeah, well, this is uh, this sounds like it's going to be exciting. I know Track Shot Live is really happy to be a part of this, um, you including us in what you got going and building there. Um, I think there's definitely room for some more shows in the South. Um, and, and for me, this show with Track Shot Live is, is what we always talk about, the Destination Derby. I know I was talking to you a little bit, asking you a few questions as far as um, the logistics of how far apart you were from – from different things. So um, you're really close. Uh, Corinth there is really close to Tupelo. <coughs> Excuse me. Where the uh, the birthplace of Elvis Presley. That's still there. That's a thing. Um, Shiloh National Battlefield. You know, that was the second bloodiest battle of the Civil War. So a lot of people aren't uh, as steeped in the Civil War like you or I, I'm sure. Um, you're probably in a similar thing coming from the South. That's That's near and dear to our hearts down here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, also, like the the old movie, what we were talking about that Walking Tall, Buford Pusser, the State Line Mob, the Dixie Mafia, all those things. That's right there in the Corinth up to uh, Selmer, Tennessee, Adamsville, right at the Tennessee line. And then if you're coming from the west side, Memphis, Graceland, uh, Lorraine Motel, where Martin Luther King was shot, Bill Street. You know, uh, there's plenty to do, plenty to see on your way to and from the Derby. Um, I'm really, really happy with the location you've picked. That's uh, that was that was well thought out. Yes, sir. That um, like I said, that's about it's about 30 minutes from my house. Like I said, it's just a it's a good sized venue, um, and we uh, like I said, our last last year when it was right there in our in my hometown, um, we're looking at we'll probably have another show at my hometown in the fall and may do a, something in the summer i'm still working something out with that if we do that it'll be an indoor show it'll be a quite a bit smaller but we're uh we're looking at that we still gotta I get with my dirt guy and see if we can make it work it's a real sandy area see if we can water it down and pack it and that kind of stuff to be able to utilize it but uh we're gonna try to do two three shows at the max a year um because I, I i still teach school and i mean my wife she's got a store so, I mean, I, I stay covered up with that kind of stuff. And then I still try to build a few cars myself. So I, I stay pretty busy. You know, people, you're talking about that, Brian. People don't realize there, uh, I've learned <laughs> going to shows with Cannonball Derby Parts or now with Track Shot Live, um, getting to know the promoters, being there early, seeing behind the scenes. There really is a science to dirt work. Uh, there's a science to dirt in its own right when you're, when you're considering having an indoor, indoor show. Yes, it's a, it's a big deal, and I've got some I've got some good sponsors that get, usually go with, mm -hmm. stick with me. Pretty good dirt guy that I've known for years, and he, uh, me and him, really got together last show, and we've uh, we've been talking about doing a, quite a few things, and 
he uh, he's helped me a lot. So um, you can't do it without my about my sponsors. We're actually fixing to get around and start talking to them again. And since we let the the Christmas break get through and all that stuff, and we've had snow this whole last week, and we're still out of school right now because of the slick roads and all that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I'm married to a teacher. We, we've dealt with the same here. Um, but yeah, you're right. And, and that weather's another factor that people don't consider if you have to bring dirt into arena, um, what kind of moisture is that holding? What kind of, you know, rain right before or <clears throat> whatever, then adding more moisture once you get it in the arena and spread it out. There's nothing worse than seeing a driver get beat by the track. And when a track goes away, it's no promote, no, no fault to the promoters. They did all they could with what they had. Yes, that kind of happened on my first derby. We uh, we wet it just to keep it down, and they'd had a rodeo the week before, so we didn't roll it in or anything. And that um, that feature, we ended up, uh, I think all but uh, two cars had just got stuck is all it was. So uh, from that point on, I made sure that we wasn't going to run into that. I felt got bad for them guys because, I mean, we literally pushed them out, and they loaded up on the trailer set for like two or three of them. And uh, but that was a learned experience on my part. You know, I didn't I didn't ask anybody how to do any of this. I just kind of jumped off in it and said, hey, let's try this and let's go. You know, well, I believe that's really the only way you're going to spread your wings in this stuff <laughs> is uh, is just go. And, you know, once you've you've done it for years and years and years, um, Sam Williams is an example. Tim Clark, uh, Blizzard Bash, those guys, two of the biggest promotions in the United States. And those guys still. Um, I see like, wow, they've, they've done all these shows and there's always a new problem that arises. Uh, you're dealing with the general public and a lot of times derby drivers aren't the, uh, I don't know, for lack of a better term, can be a crybaby, you know? Yeah. Yes, yes. That, uh, I'm, I'm fair across the board with that kind of stuff. We'll, uh, we'll just walk somebody to the gate and move on because I can't. I have my, my sponsors, you know, help me a lot. And then we have insurance and then the general public itself. If we're something crazy, they're not going to bring their kids back to it. So we have to really keep an eye on all that. But I've got some pretty good people that help me with the derby and stuff, too. So that's a that's another good thing about it is having good people around you to help you. You're absolutely right about that. You can't do it without that. Just the sheer amount of hours that are spent in a tech line, um, you know, getting cars through, retechs, that type of stuff. You know, that, that and a lot of times you'll see the same crew flagging the show that, that was doing tech. So their day is really, really long. And, uh, you know, fatigue and those types of things set in. A driver, you can't fault them a lot of times. It's adrenaline. Thing. You know how it is when you're out there and you got that helmet on. You know, the adrenaline, I, I know I've uh, up in Minnesota, Mike Ticks disqualified me and I come out madder than a hornet. And yeah, my door came open. He should have disqualified me, but, you know, I wasn't thinking clearly. And then once I settled down, and I know that goes for lots of drivers out there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It, it definitely does. Um, and I'm, <laughs> um, I might back off of something Wicked done at the uh, fall show. They had a, uh, uh, to a little fairy that was the sandbag fairy. We're going to do an Easter, Easter bunny, for the uh, for the sand. We're going to do some uh, pink balloons for them. And uh, once they're once we give them a balloon, I mean the next time we're just going to break their stick. We're going to move on. So uh, that was a uh, that was a good thing. That way they know there's 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 no there's no not knowing with that. Uh, that's very cool. I was at that show there in Paris, Tennessee, and, and uh, saw the ferry, and that's a great idea, the Easter Bunny, right around that time. Yeah. Yeah, for I sure. Dig that. I, depending on the weather, uh, I know what Mississippi could be like in the in the early spring. It could still be pretty warm, uh, so I don't envy whoever whoever the Easter Bunny is. Yeah, um, it, it can be freezing temperatures or it can be 60 degrees outside you know that that second week of march you can't ever tell what the temperature will be in mississippi yeah you're absolutely right uh i know that's uh that's something that i've had on my mind everybody like fatty and ticks coming down for the show or whoever comes down they're kind of they have this perception that they're going to florida they're going to get out of this uh you know this nuclear winter and i'm like guys that's not it, it you know this is it, it's not like that down here yeah, actually, last a couple of weeks ago, me and my wife, we uh, Google what the weather was, you know, at the Derby Derby time a year ago, and it was showing it was in the 50s. So, 
I'm hoping it's that again, the 40s and 50s, and maybe it'll be something decent like that. It usually stays pretty warm in the arena there. Um, we can keep the doors open, or shut them. Um, they've got vents and everything as far as the, the uh, fumes and all that. So we're to, nobody should be freezing in there by no means. So that, that'll be the good part about the venue there. Uh, you're absolutely correct, and we're talking Mississippi, which is, um, I don't know, I would say you're probably three and a half, four hours from where I live uh, up here in western Kentucky. And, and you know, Sturgis coming up this weekend, and the high is like in the 50s, right at early, you know, the, the high – or low 50s, I'm sorry. So we're doing that in Kentucky in January. You know, it could be 70 degrees in Mississippi at that time. <clears throat> There's no telling for sure. Absolutely, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. Now, did, when we were talking earlier, talking about derbies in Mississippi, did you ever go to the old Tupelo derbies? Uh, Not Tupelo, no. I'm sorry, Tunica. Tunica. No, I, the ones they ended about the time I really got started, and I heard it was a lot of drama, so I was just trying to stay away from it all um, at the time, Man, and it that, didn't happen. I, I couldn't tell you the gentleman's name that put it on, but I hold him in high regard and with much respect. He done a great job. Them boys from Arkansas come over. That's the first time I ever seen a. I wouldn't call it a five foot car because it was way more than a five foot car. But um, I really enjoyed those shows. Of course, Tunica was you know pretty hopping, and that's another thing you guys coming down to Brian's show here at the Crossroads. Um, what are you an hour from Tunica? Uh, about an hour and a half, I believe, is what it is, because it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere, and it's kind of hard to get to just by, you know, you kind of got to go the back way around to get it because of the area that I'm from. So it's about a, probably an hour and a half from Corinth. Sure. So, so guys, hour and a half, big casinos. Uh, Caesars has got a couple there. Uh, trying to think, um, gold, uh, gold strike, something like that. Quite a few. You guys that like going to casinos, just another thing kind of offered in the area. Um, on the way to and from the Derby here uh, in Mississippi. So, Brian, real quick, before we get off here, can we touch on, um, again, on the classes? You said it was uh, – are you calling it bone stock, your your main class? Yes, we're calling it bone stock because, I mean, we were – I mean, it, it's a lot of uh, – it's similar to everybody else's bone stock. It's just kind of we're going to allow some trend braces. Uh, we're going to do the film six off on the doors and the trunks. Uh, we're going to allow unlimited creasing. Uh, we're going we're gonna to do a, a few things different, but you get two less pieces of all thread versus like a Wicked Rule does. Um, so it, it's it's still bone stock. It's just kind of my version of it. I, and like I said, I kind of went off the Blue Collar Boys rules a lot whenever I put these rules together. So you said there were 92 cars registered. Is that correct for that show? Yes, sir. 92 cars registered. And you know how it is a lot of times. I mean, 92 cars registered who knows if 50 or 60 of them will show up so we'll probably have i mean i hope all 92 show up and if we do we'll have you know 23 car heats and and go from there but i mean the reality of it i mean i'm i'm guessing probably not everybody's going to show up and we're going to have you know 20 car heats or whatever it comes out to be and then we'll uh we'll have like a 25 car feature and then we'll have a raffle car and uh the raffle car is going to be a square body uh vic on a square body frame um so it'll be a pretty good little car um like i said we uh we're gonna i'm gonna take a lot of stuff out of my weld car and stick in it that way i know i got some good running gears and everything with it sure so so that leads me up to my question with your bone stock there do you have open spots still because weren't you taking 100 so do you still have eight spots that, that people could come on if they want to come run Yes, sir. I do. I still do. Um, and you can, there's a link on the OC promotions, OC events and promotions page. Uh, you scroll down, uh, find the, the post that says that, and there's a, a square link there and you can check out there and, and buy, uh, pre-buy. I mean, the day of they're 125. Um, if you pre-buy they're a hundred, so pretty, it's a pretty, Pretty very affordable uh, entry for you six thousand dollars to win. So, and we're paying back five spots with that. That's what I was what I was trying to get to. There was what was the purse going to be for that class? Uh, I believe I don't have it exactly in front of me, but believe, it's six thousand. I know to win for sure. Fifteen, five, three, and two is what it'll end up being. Well, that's really not bad money. You're paying down quite a bit. Yes, uh, we didn't 
have that many cars going um so we just when we 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 started with 50 and then we added a 75 and then we went on to 100 so i just we added the money back to it every time and then our uh our chain and bang we're paying 2500 to win with it and then we're paying three spots on on it as well that's what i know is the chain and bang class full yes it is full it filled up um probably about a week and a half after we posted it it's completely full um like i said we're taking 30 cars and we're going to do a one shot deal um and both classes will probably have a mad dog we're just going to see what kind of uh crowd we have that's going to decide a lot on the mad dog money the more people we have in those seats the more mad dog money i'll, I'll definitely put in a pot for sure definitely now your minivan class is it full or do you still have room for a few guys to kind of register and get in on that we still have room for that um there's a link on there as well with that bone stock that, that you can check out and it's uh i believe it's 60 dollars to pre-enter for it um it's i think it's 75 the day of and we're taking um i think i think we're taking their 20 or 25 on it so i know we have 11 or more spots left um but uh i would i would love to see 20 minivans come it'd be that'd be really cool and it'll be a one-shot deal as well yeah that'll be really neat that's uh, i mean a great opportunity to run in a new venue um if you guys have never ran indoors um or if you've never been to an indoor show <laughs> there's no better one than this one to check out indoor shows are a totally different game changer being out of the elements um it's 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 just something really cool that happens in our sport, and it's very few places that these indoor shows do happen. There's really not that many throughout the year, um, just a handful. So you don't want to miss this. Uh, again, Track Shot Live is going to be there. Brian's bringing in Track Shot Live to get the Derby, to get the to get the, the word out there, show off what's happening in the South, kind of uh, nationwide. It's all 100% for free. YouTube, Twitch, TrackShotLive.com, Facebook, TikTok. You'll be able to watch the show, but I promise you want to be there and actually see it in person. I know a lot of the guys that are coming. Uh, Brian, you, you and I had kind of discussed um, some of the guys that were coming and where they were from and, and this and that. And there's a few from, I wouldn't say my hometown, but my general area that are coming to run. So uh, I'm excited about it because most of the time when we do a show on Track Shot Live, I'm in California or I'm in New York and I may know the guy from Facebook or social media, but you know, these guys, I, I know where they live or, you know, we shop at the same Walmart type stuff. So I'm really excited yes. about having some of those Southern drivers on track shot live. Yes. We've got a uh, drivers coming from five different States. I think one guy told me the other day he's driving seven and a half hours to come. Uh, we've got from Mississippi, um, Alabama, Tennessee, arkansas missouri kentucky and indiana so i guess that's uh eight states there so we have uh quite a few coming um mostly i mean most of them bone stock uh class but um a few of the chain bang guys they're they're driving um too well you know technically the last uh the last show of the year to my knowledge was uh tyler goodman blue collar boys promotions there in russellville kentucky and track shot was there a couple of us were kind of just hanging out having some fun and other than this wicked show here um you're really the first show of the year um to pop off the season even uh even track shot uh, our first show of the year is normally not till about three weeks later in yuba city california Yes, there. Um, I, I know of another small show that'll be right before my show, but yeah, this is pretty early for sure. And the reason mine's so early is just kind of the dates that uh, the venue was open was a lot of it. So that's how it just kind of worked out. Well, it works out good that time too, because you don't really have to combat a lot of other shows. You're not you're not causing conflict with other shows unintentionally. Obviously, um, it's just. Uh, get it out there and I'm okay with derby season going year round, man. I have said in my shop since I left Tyler's show uh, back like December the 5th or, or somewhere around in there and I'm going nuts. I can't wait to be at an airport or be in the truck headed to a show and you know, that's upon us here just a couple of days. Yes, sir. It's, it's definitely coming and we're going to go up the night before for Sturgis and uh, that way we can get to tech early and 
take our torches with us in case we got to cut any uh, go from there i'm hoping we don't have to cut but if we do we'll cut and we'll move on um we're just going just to kind of support them um will and them is going to come down he's not running at our show but i think he's going to ride with one of his buddies and so a lot of those guys are coming and i want to go up there with them um that's the thing is we kind of want to all support each other in this area and i talked to uh kevin richards a decent bit and uh jesse ursey you, you hear from him all the time or you don't hear from him at all so you can't ever tell so i mean i talked a decent bit of them guys you know uh uh, on definitely weekly i've been wearing will out here a bunch lately on little questions for the wicked weld and uh, he's usually pretty good about answering something it's usually something i just overlooked which i deal with the same thing on a daily basis somebody will ask me a question and i'm like it's in the rules but i don't say that i say you know hey it's it's this or that and it's easy to overlook a lot of times well it's easy to catch yourself trying to go around the rules too you know, you're, you're, I'm sure you're guilty of that as, as anybody else. Well, that, you know, you see something and the light bulb goes off. Oh, they screwed up right here. Yeah. Yeah. I've, uh, I've had a decent bit. That's one thing I can say about, uh, this year's wicked rules. They've, uh, they've got them down pretty, pretty good, um, on being very clear. So last year I feel like there was some, some holes and some stuff, but this year it's pretty, it's pretty cut and dry. And, um, uh, well, I'm trying to make you know the sport. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there, but the sport's going in the same direction. We're all going toward the Crown Victoria, just which of the three eras or or generations of that car. So, um, like you're saying, it's going to get a lot easier, especially for guys like you, promoters, to narrow things down as we go, because there's only so many things you can do to a certain part or or object. Yes, yes, and I'm um, I'm seeing. Um, up in the Kentucky area, a lot of those guys are going to the um, rules where it's like a true bone stock, you know, uh, get the windows out of it, maybe chain the motor mounts down, um, block the front end up somehow, put a slider and a shifter and maybe change the column out and they're running stock motor, stock rear ends. And uh, I'm kind of hoping something like that comes about in my area because there's a lot of people, I feel like they'll be on board for that, but we're just gonna have to wait and see. I believe you're right. It's it's really funny how the um, the cycle of life is in demolition derby. We we go to the kicker cars and escalate up to the five foot cars, and then all of a sudden we fall on our face and we're back down. Let's build stock, stock, stock. Yes, and I've got I've got the trans brakes in this weld car. I built it uh, probably about eight years ago. Everything was going to trans brakes, so I ran a couple shows with the trans brakes, and then we win the last you know five years or so no trans braces and uh my day builds transmissions and it's all great and grand but i still got to pay him for his at least something for his time and the parts to swap everything on busting cases so that's something i'm i'm very big about is the trans braces because i mean it, it saves the guy some time and some money and he can carry on and a lot of these people don't want you to put pressure on them on the car and i mean if they won't cut the firewall out i mean there ain't a whole lot of pressure you can do but at least it saves that kind of stuff the stuff that uh, helps the helps the person not necessarily helps the car but if you do it right of course it does but helps the person's pocketbook nowadays i agree with that I, i'm with that on some wheels and, and wheels and different things like that i think um tires um bead lips are to be allowed just protecting that investment on the stuff you're still going to pop the tire um you know you're talking about that brian going back eight years ago the they weren't even really i've never I, I don't i don't think i ever heard the word pressure used back then um with the trans well, and things i'm sure somebody had figured it out but it wasn't common knowledge it was and i actually was working up in kentucky and i bought some parts from a, a derby guy and he went to explain some of it to me and uh I was like, all right. And so uh, I done a little bit of that. And I mean, it was just stock body mount bolts, though, swap anything. So you got to be careful pressure and that kind of stuff. And, um, but it did help some back in the day back then. But we were using, sure. uh, I was allowed a, a, a DP until they realized that not everybody's, not, not their guys wasn't buying DPs. So then they said we couldn't run DPs. So with a DP and a, uh, trans brace you had a car that would uh, stay together for a while absolutely it definitely helps 
it definitely helps. Well, Brian, I, I've, I've kept you on here a little bit long-winded. I'm just really excited about your show. Looking forward to that, the first show of Track Shot Live for the 2024 season, uh, about uh, about two weeks before we head to Yuba City, California there with Blaine Williams. I'm really proud to have uh, – I'm proud of where I'm from. I'm proud of the, the southern United States or southeastern United States and that general area, and I, I love my sport, and I'm happy to see uh, see what you're doing there in Mississippi. Looking forward to your show, for sure. Looking forward to being there with Track Shot. And um, I know you've got to get to work, Brian. You got a lot of work to do on this car. I'm sure your nerves are starting to get shaky. I really not too bad. Usually it's just the day of when we get ready to go out. I guess maybe just a little bit, but it doesn't. It doesn't really bother me. I guess too bad because of the drag race I've drove on and everything else, and had a guy hit me drag racing, which does not happen very often. So I mean nerves part don't really get to me it's just a hope oh i hope i get done i hope i do everything i want to get done to the car because i've you know not necessarily waited the last minute but this life has happened and a lot of stuff still didn't get done so i'm still going through it and it's just uh taking some time especially when you do it by yourself yeah and absolutely and you get out there and you don't want to beat yourself you don't want a wire to come off because you forgot to zip tie it back or, or whatever you don't want there's nothing worse than beating yourself Yes, sir. And, I, and I, I've had that happen in Derby before, too, for sure. So, uh, so Brian, again, I'm going to touch on it right quick before we jump off here. March the 16th, Corinth, Mississippi, the Crossroads Arena. What time does that show kick off? We're going to start it at 3 o'clock that day with the power wheels. That way, we make sure we get everybody home uh, at a decent hour because, I mean, there's so many people that's going to drive it. And there's got several people that's going to stay as well. But I don't want that show running until, you know, midnight or anything like that with so many cars. So we're going to try to keep it moving. We're going to start at 3 o'clock that day. 3 o'clock. That's great. Yeah, yeah. And there, the Corinth, I'm not real familiar with Corinth. I've been through there. Uh, honestly, I hate saying I'm more familiar with Tupelo and, and Tunica and some of those places. Quite a few hotels, plenty of places to stay um, there in the area. Uh, we've got uh, – there's four motels. I would definitely highly suggest the uh, Holiday Inn Express and the Hampton Inn. The other ones are in. They're okay, but I don't I don't know if I would uh, want to stay there or not. Um, and Tupelo is not very far away. And then you've got Selmer, Tennessee is not very far away. And, uh, of course, you've got um, the Memphis area. I mean, there's, there's several places to stay. And um, we're going to start tech the, the day before, and then we're going to start early on Saturday as well. That way we can roll through these cars, and a lot of these guys are going to come in and stay a night or two. So uh, they've all, a lot of them have been reaching out about what motels. And if you check out my OC events and promotions Facebook page, I'll put a list of motels where to stay on there as well. And if anybody has any questions, you just give me a holler anytime through Messenger or my phone number. It's all over the OC events and promotions page. Uh, it don't matter what time of day or whatever. If I'm asleep, I'll I'll respond back to you when I get up, or if I'm doing something, I, I usually answer everybody back within the, you know within not very long. Sure. Now, now, Brian, you said that um, I know. Obviously, you had pre-registration for your show. What about tickets? Is that at the gate only, or are you doing pre-sale online? At the gate only. Uh, this venue, if we uh, if we do pre-sale, of course, some a couple people get their hand in the cookie jar, and it causes. Uh, entry or the uh, tickets to get in to go up and for this time being we're just going to do it the day of a lot of people have asked you know am I going to what about my family I'm you know I've got a car I'm coming early and if you've got a car and you want to buy tickets for your uh, family when you walk come to the gate with your car you're welcome to do that that's not a problem at all um, a lot of people is worried about not having enough tickets I believe we're going to have enough tickets but if you're worried about it we can sell them uh, Friday and Saturday uh, on location. We just can't do it um, ahead of time because, you know, some of them people, I'm not going to say the names of them, um, they got to get their money because it's a venue that offers some of that. Um, so uh, they'll take a chunk off of it. Got to add it back and everything else. So we're just going to do it um, the day of. Absolutely. Well, that's the best way to do it. It's first time show, guys. There's going to be there's going to be some tickets. Um, now, next year there may not be any tickets. Next year we may have a problem. Once uh, once the world sees this show on Track Shot Live and they get a little exposure, um, who doesn't want to go toward the South when it's when you got three or four inches of snow on the ground? So, um, 
Brian, I really appreciate you talking to us, man. I'm looking super forward to your show. Can't wait. Memphis is, oddly enough, Memphis is my favorite town in the world. Um, I don't know why I've always loved Memphis, Tennessee, and the history there. So uh, I'm going to get to spend some time there with Ticks and Fatty, hopefully, when they fly in. And uh, looking forward to coming down, seeing your show, and uh, doing Track Shot Live stuff. Yes, sir. I look forward to y'all coming, and uh, it should be a good time. We'll be able to hang out with y'all and uh, maybe put on a good show for y'all to uh, show everybody else. Absolutely, Brian. Well, you get to work on that car, man. And uh, we'll be seeing you this weekend, guys. We'll try to get uh, we'll try to grab Brian maybe this weekend over in Sturgis, uh, get an interview for him, uh, throw one down on the road. Yes, sir. I appreciate you. Yes, sir, Brian. Thank you, buddy. And you take care. All right, you too.
make a change and I can take the pain. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna go down swinging. <laughs> Everyone has to be mature, be butts and nuts, and then there's Bobby. Fucking Bobby. Bobby don't like us. <laughs>